Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create this scene in Blender. Trust me, this is super simple, everyone should be able to follow my step-by-step -step guide and you will be able to achieve similar results. First thing I wanted to do is find a cool color model on Sketchfab. This will help me to find the correct scale of everything and just helps me to create my scene. Exactly at that moment my internet crashed down and had to play a little dino jump until even that broke down. So I started out in Blender without a car model and just put in a cube and scaled it up a little bit on the y-axis so I get a feeling for the size. After that I added in a plane and scaled it up. To create the wall and the roof I added in a second cube and moved it up on the z-axis and then if you press S to scale it and press shift Z you can isolate the scale only on the x and y-axis and scale it up until I had the roof. I scaled both the roof and the floor a little bit more on the y-axis and moved it into place. Then I pressed tab to go into edit mode and with the roof selected you can press ctrl R to create a loop cut. If you scroll your mouse wheel you can create even more loop cuts and that I did for the horizontal and for the vertical axis. After that you can select every second face of the roof and press E to extrude it and create the pillars. Because I wanted to extend the wall, I added in an array modifier and played around with the offset so it matches with the original wall. I did the same for the floor and increased the factor to 2 or 3. At that point I already added in my camera. Try to do this as soon as possible as you can in your scene because then you have to only focus on the part that is actually seen by the camera and you won't spend unnecessary time doing something that you can't actually see in the final render. Then I selected the roof again and went into edit mode to add the wall on the right side. If you select the first face and control select the last face, it should select every face in between this line and then press E again to extrude it. Because we have the array modifier activated, it should extrude it all the way to the back. To close it off in the back to have a nice dark spot there, I just added in a new cube, scaled it up and placed it right at the end. Now I want to add a single hole in the roof, but if I would do this right now, the array modifier would duplicate it all the way to the back. Therefore, I have to apply the array modifier. Before you do that, always make a duplicate of the object because maybe you'll need it later again. So I duplicated the wall, called it wall backup and just hit it by selecting the eye and the camera symbol. Then in the modifiers tab of the normal wall, you can select this small arrow and hit apply. This will apply the modifier and now you have a whole object. Now to actually create the hole, we have to select the wall and go into edit mode. Make sure wireframe mode is selected so you can see both sides. Then select both faces, the top and the bottom face, right click and choose the bridge faces option. This will poke a hole through the wall and also create the in-between faces. After that my internet was back up and I could go onto Sketchfab to search a car model. Type in car and always select downloadable. Make sure the model has this little download symbol at the top right. If it has a dollar sign, it means you have to buy the model. After a few minutes, I found a cool car model I like. And if you have the Sketchfab Blender add-on activated, you can just copy the link of this model and paste it into the add-on in Blender. After hitting import, the car model was in Blender already with the textures set up. I placed the car at the right position and deleted the placeholder cube. Now it's time to make the scene look good. So I went into Cycles Render Mode and also activated under Color Management the AGX mode. I just like the colors of it. And now we have many options how to light the scene. We could add an HDRI, but in my case I just wanted two light sources, one coming from the top, one coming from the side. So I added in an area light, placed it on the side and scaled it all the way up to the back. I increased the intensity of the light and also changed the color to a blue one. To get the light from the top I added in a second area light, scaled it up kinda the size of the hole and increased also the intensity and changed the color to a orange tone. To see better what's going on I split the screen on the left side in the render mode, on the right side in the object mode and then increased and decreased the size of the light. You can do this either in the viewport by just scaling up or in the light settings there's also a size parameter and the idea of it is if you decrease the value so the smaller the light is the sharper the light will be and it won't spread that much. Because the hole was a little bit too big I went into edit mode and selected the sides and with pressing E I could just extrude it and decrease 
increase the hole a little bit. Now it was time to add some materials to the floor and to the walls. Therefore I used the Blender Kit add-on. You can just type in whatever material you want, select the plane or the floor and choose the material you see. For the floor I just added in a stone material and in the shadings tab I added in a brightness slider in the base color just to lighten up the floor a bit because it was super dark. For the walls I just added in a concrete material. If you have problems with the UV or the material looks super weird, most of the time you can just select your objects press tab to go into edit mode and then press U to get the unwrap options and choose cube protection. This works most of the time for some static simple objects but I can't go super deep into material settings right now. Most of the time this works fine and there are hundreds if not thousands of Blender YouTube tutorials that explains material pretty well. Now to add in this foggy atmosphere we have to scale up a cube and place it all over the whole scene. With the cube selected, go into the shadings tab and add in a material. And add in a principal volume instead and connect it to the volume output. At this point, just play around with the density and lower it until you can see something and the scene looks a little bit foggy. Now I left the density a little bit higher just to see what the light is actually doing. So don't worry if my scene looks super dark at this point, I just wanted to focus on the light. If you select the light, we have a angle setting. If you decrease this angle setting, you can see the light will be more compact and you can see the god rays way better. That's what I did at this point, just played around with the angle setting of the top light and the light on the left side. I moved the sources a little bit around just to get the right feeling and the right look for it. After I found the setting that works for my scene, I lowered the density again of the fog to also get the feeling how the final result looks. At this point we are nearly finished. I just played around a little bit more with the cameras, added maybe some depths of field, but not too much. And also went into the render settings and changed the sampling and the denoising. With fog in your scene you always have to be a little bit careful with the samples. Maybe you need to up the samples a little bit more until you add the denoiser at the end. Because otherwise it doesn't look that realistic. If you're happy with your settings, we can add in some glow, therefore we have to render out one still image. After the render is done, we can go into the compositing tab. Make sure you activate the use node setting and add in a viewer node. Connect this one also with the render. To add in the glow or bloom effect, we have to add in the glare node. Connect the glare node both with the compositor and the viewer node and play around with the settings. I changed it to bloom and lowered the threshold just to get a little bit more glow. But this is different for every scene. After you have found your settings, don't worry, you don't have to do this all over again each time you render. This will be now added to each frame you render out. So you can even create animations and for each frame this bloom or glow effect will be added. All I did at that point is just play around a little bit more with the light, with the textures. I decreased the texture size a little bit because it was too big in my opinion. So it looked a little bit more realistic if I lowered the size of the different stone and concrete materials. And after I was happy I rendered out a final image. But trust me, don't stop there, always put it in another software where you can do some color grading. My program of choice is Photoshop, I'm just super familiar with it and I love the camera filter I can add to it. And that's it, just make the colors pop a little bit more, add some grain and maybe some vignette and you are done. You have a great looking image, it's not super complex, don't overcomplicate your scene. Try to create simple scenes as this one just to get a hang of Blender and the hang of creating different environments and different atmospheric stuff until you feel comfortable and safe using the program. After that you can always make more, model your own cars or model your own stuff. But I feel like a lot of persons get stuck in the process of oh I need to model all from scratch and I can't use different assets from other people. I think that is one of the main problems of Blender because people get super scared of the complexity of the program before having created something that they like and that they enjoy looking at because my first few renders were horrible because I always wanted to model everything on my own and create everything on my own but as soon as I started using different assets from other people my renders improved by a ton and now that I know what looks good and what works I can also create these from scratch 
and maybe use my own models for it. That was it for this tutorial. I hope you could learn something. I hope you could recreate that scene and are happy with the result. If you want more tutorials in this style where I just explain how I created a certain type of render, just let me know it in the comments and I hope you have a great and successful day. See you the next time. Peace out.